Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us here at Soul Raymond Ministries today, June the 24th, for our morning teaching and prayer time. Today we are going to um, have Sister Dolores sharing with you on uh, a very popular verse of scripture, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. So get your Bibles ready and you'll be able to follow along with what the woman of God has for us. And as we open up in prayer, Father, we come before you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you so much for this time that we have today to be able to come together in fellowship, in prayer, and based upon your word. Oh, God, we know that you move by your spirit and you lead us and guide us in the directions that you want us to go in. As we've come together over these past three weeks, Lord, now in our fourth week of prayer time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, this is our first week of prayer and teaching on the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday days that you assign to us. Lord, we are looking forward to a great and awesome move of the Spirit. We anticipate new revelations and a greater understanding as you propel us forward as members of your body of Christ, as we are united together and bonded through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Father, I thank you right now so much because you have given us more in this day and time with the technology that is at our disposal, Father, to reach countless people. And I can see what you meant, just a glimmer of what you meant when you said greater works than these shall we do. And it is not that we're going to raise more people from the dead or teach more people as far as numbers, but the kingdom. This is what we're here for, God. We are here to advance the kingdom of God and to share the message that you have given us. And I thank you for that. And I, I, I just magnify you right now today, oh God, for this opportunity. And as I yield right now to this awesome woman of God and her teaching, I thank you and may she be anointed with your word, and may your plan and your purpose for all of us be accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Rhonda, and to all the listeners. Uh, we want to share with you briefly from the book of Second Chronicles 7 and 14, but we're going to back up uh, a couple of verses to kind of get a, little, a better understanding as to why uh, 7 and 14 is being given to us. Uh, this talks about the scripture where uh, Solomon was praying and God said he had heard him. He wanted Israel to repent. In the previous chapters, uh, Solomon had built a house unto uh, the Lord. And Israel, as always, in her you know, contrary ways, uh, she was always deviating from the plan of God. And yet God always brought her back uh, by the prophet or, or the one he had in leadership. And in this case, he was dealing with uh, Solomon. And we're going to look at verse 12, which says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I've heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. As if we know in the Old Testament, uh, that was the place uh, that God always sacrificed. Uh, they did blood offerings. Uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, we have Christ. But in the Old Testament, they used the blood of lambs and goats, uh, representative as a shedding of blood of sacrifice. And uh, verse 13 said, If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Now, God was setting forth conditions before he offered them a way out. He said, these are the conditions that I'm setting forth for you. He said, I want you to do some things. He, said, uh, he told Solomon, now I've heard your prayer. And Solomon always prayed for the people. He always went in and did sacrifice. The priest went in and did sacrifices uh, for the people because they were the only ones qualified to enter. And as they have gone in and made the sacrifices, 
there was still uh, undone work among the people themselves. The priest had did his job. Solomon had did his his uh, due responsibility. He had provided a temple. He had prayed, and he had, you know, went in for the people. And now the people had a responsibility on their part. And so the Lord was saying to him, he said, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, I have the right to do that. He said, if I send locusts among, among the people, I have a right to do that. If I send pestilence among my people, I have the right to do that. And he doesn't do it because he doesn't love his people. He does things to get our attention. Because as natural human beings, if we don't have something to occur out of the ordinary, to draw our attention away from ourselves and our activities and you know our proclivities and things that we are interested in for ourselves, we won't pay much attention to what God is doing. We'll miss it. We will actually miss what God is doing. And oftentimes, uh, he sends. People may not like the idea that these things can happen. But they're talking about all of the locusts coming out of the ground. They can't come out of the ground. They've been in there, uh, the ground all those uh, 100 and whatever some years that I hear people talking about on the news. Well, the, God knew they were there. He allowed them to be there and breed and whatever. And if they're coming up out of the ground and going to be a pestilence or, or, or a, uh, a distraction or a sore place to the people, God knows that. And yet he allows it. There are places where there will, where it will not rain. And we, we mourn and we say, Lord, oh, my God, the place is so dry. I see them in Africa in places the people just struggling, trying to find a little small drink of water, drinking dirty water. When I was in Haiti, I witnessed this for myself. The same places that the cattle drank from and stood in is the same place where they washed their clothes on a rock in Haiti. It was the same place where they went and dipped water in their little buckets and, and things to carry home. And to me, that was well. To me, that was awful because. Here in the U.S., we didn't do such things. But for them, it was normal. It was their way of life. And so when we see these things happening and these things coming upon us, we wonder why. Why is all these things happening as they are? We're dealing with what's right now a pestilence that we can't control. We have no control over it. We can't seem to find a cure for it. But the Spirit of God knows all things even before they come. Therefore, the answer is already in place. But we look at Second Chronicles 7 and 14 is our answer. The first word in that verse is the word if. If is a very small word. It's a preposition. It's a word that is conditional. Something is, uh, I used to tell my children all the time that I, I raised about five kids, and, and I would tell them, I call them even now as adults, and I'll say to them, I said, do you know how much I love you? And they said, yes, Auntie, Auntie Lois, we know. I said, how do I love you? They'll say, you love me unconditional. I said, yes, I do. I said, I don't care if you steal, kill, you know, whatever you do, my love for you would not change. You can always come to me, and that's how God is. You can always come to me and let me know what you've done, be it right or wrong. My love for you will not change. And so that's what the Lord is saying uh, to Israel and, and really to us in this hour that if this conditional word, his love for us is not going to change. But if we want to receive the blessing that he has for us, like in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, if we want to be able to enjoy all those good things that he's promised us, we've got to meet some conditions. And the conditions are set forth here in Second Chronicles 7 and 14. The word says, if my people, you've got to be a part of it, if my people, which are called by my name, 
you know, people were in the Old Testament, they always feared the God of Israel. They would say the, the people, the God of Israel, and the God of Israel are moving through the land, and people moved in fear because they knew how God operated with Israel, that he always blessed them, that they were always triumphant. But then some things changed. He said, if you will humble yourself, he said, if people would humble themselves, we who are called by his name. And I would say, oftentimes people say the church, and that's good. But I'm going to say the believers. If you say that you are a believer and you are called by his name, then there are some things and conditions that the Spirit of God wants us to meet in this hour today. He said, humble ourselves. A humbling is a, 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 a place of humility. Where we're honoring him. He said, if you will humble ourselves. He said, humble themselves and do what? Pray. <laughs> And we have all types of prayer. We pray for deliverance. We pray for our prayers of agreement. And there are all types of prayers that are listed in the scripture. But in this case, this specific prayer that is referenced in this scripture is a prayer of repentance. He said, if you will pray and seek my faith, when you're seeking something, you're looking, you're searching. You're earnest, you're dedicated, you're not deviated from what you're doing because you have a goal or something you're trying to reach. And so the Word of God tells us if we would humble ourselves, that's condition one. Pray, condition two, making a petition known to God. He said, then... If you would begin to seek my faith, and when you begin to seek the face of God, if you remember when you first came to know him and you didn't really know a whole lot about how God operated and the spirit of God, you were just hungry to know. When you went on your job for the first time, you got your first job, you wanted to be the best. And so you sought to learn all the rules to follow all the directions given to you by your managers or your supervisors. When we come in contact with God and with the word of God, that should become a seeking and a hunger in our hearts to know all that we can about him. And he just hasn't left us just hanging. Jesus said, I'm going to pray the Father to send you a comforter a teacher, a guide, one who will give you instruction. And so if you say, I, I, I've talked to my little niece one time, and she said, no, Auntie, I don't know how to pray. I said, you know what you do, baby? You talk to God just like you talk to me. He'll hear you, and he understands where you are. I said, if you ask him for forgiveness, he'll forgive you. He's a good father. And so he said that we would begin to seek his faith. Turn. There's that powerful word. Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear. There's that condition. Then will I hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sins. And I will heal their land. And that's where we are today. The Spirit of God desired that we would seek him, in earnest seek him, in repentance seek him, in humility seek him. And in all that we do, most of all, let there be a turning, a change that truly takes place in our hearts. Because if your heart does not change, then your ways soon return. 
Israel would oftentimes repent, but she oftentimes went back to her old ways. And if we don't do our due diligence to continue to seek God and to continue to understand how the Spirit of God can operate in our lives to build us up and make us stronger, to show us how to do that inner work on that inner man, that we go back to our old ways. And that's what the Lord is saying in this verse. He said, I have conditions that I need you to meet. And when you meet these conditions, I'll hear from heaven. And I will forgive your sins. And I will heal your land. You ever experience being healed by the power of God? It's an awesome thing. Went through it myself this past year. To know that only God could turn around your situation. Israel was in a situation that only God could turn. We are in a situation that only God can turn. The Spirit of God said to me about a month ago. He woke me up in the middle of the night, maybe 2 or 3 in the morning. And I heard him say in my spirit, he said, death has come upon the earth. And I just, I hesitated. And it shook me in my spirit. He said, death has come up on the earth, and he is walking the entirety of it. When the sons of God went to present themselves before God, Satan came with them. And he said, where have you been? What have you been doing? He said, I've been walking to and fro, up and down in the earth, seeking whom I may devour. Seeking whom I may devour. When God allowed the death angel to pass through Egypt, he said to the people of God, slay a lamb and put the blood on the doorpost. And if I see the blood, then the death angel will pass by. That was representative of Christ's blood sharing, being shed for us today. When the enemy sees the blood, he passes by. And so today we want to return to our Father. Like little children running home because they hear the voice of the Father calling to them. We want to return to the altars, not to just raise our hand in the audience and say, yes, I accept him. Yes, I do this with prayer repentance. He said, earnestly do so. Earnestly do so. Begin to turn our hearts back to the Father. God desires to do great things for us. And as the enemy is walking the earth right now, death is walking the earth. The Lord said he's starting in the White House. Mm. Every house, the White House, the church house, he said that the death is, is passing through the walls of every home and lean to. There's no place that is exempt. He said every lean to, every shack, people in backwoods, people where they, they live out in the open. He said death is walking, and he's seeking whom he may devour. So, yes, it is praying time. But before we begin to pray and ask God to do so many things for us, we must follow the instruction given us. In Second Chronicles seven fourteen, we must humble ourselves, pray, and seek His face. And He said, "I'll hear from heaven, and I'll do the turning. I'll blow it off the face of the earth. I'll dry up the COVID nineteen. Men don't know where it came from." They don't understand how to make it leave. 
But God already has the answer. And if we would turn our hearts toward the Father, like little children do toward their parents, when they need something, they go to their parents. But he's our Father God. We go to him by means of the Holy Spirit and ask him to show us what we need to do. If he's given the answer in the hands of a scientist, say, Lord, touch the scientist that you've given the answer to. That's still God. The wisdom, the knowledge, he's given it to someone if it has to come through a medication. Whatever is done, it's going to be done when we begin to seek the face of God. And the turning will begin to take place. All of our homes, have been affected. Maybe COVID-19 may not be in my house, but it has affected my house. It has affected my life, your life, the lives of your children, the lives of your family, your businesses. Everything has been touched by this pestilence. And the last closing verse, the line it says, I will heal their land. You see, I'll dry up the pestilence, and I will heal their land. And so today we, well, we want to ask the Father to begin to move on our behalf. We want to do our due diligence, do our part. It's wonderful. The prayers and the songs and the feedings. God has touched the heart of humanity in a way that I have not seen in all my 60 some years of living. All across the nation, around the world, God is touching the hearts of humanity to remind us that we are connected, that we are one. One race, the human race. And he said, I've called the people to repentance. Let us do so and turn the hearts of the Father unto the children, in the hearts of the children, unto the Father. We're going to be releasing now to Sister Rhonda as she moves forward in our prayer time. Amen, and thank you so much, uh, Pastor Delor- uh, Sister Dolores. Um, you know, when you were just, uh, as you were just closing, and as you were um, saying that God is calling us to repentance, you know, I felt impressed that you lead us in a prayer of repentance. <clears throat> lead us in a prayer, and, and pray for those people who are listening, uh, that the Spirit will move upon uh, his body to have a heart of repentance. So if you could if you could go ahead and pray for that, that would just be wonderful. Amen. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That we know that without you, we can do nothing. And with you, all things are possible. We humble ourselves in our hearts. And if we can bow on our knees and we can prostrate ourselves in the places where we are when we hear these words. But in our hearts, we lay ourselves before you. We lay our emotions, our, our minds, there before you today, Father. And we ask that you will move by the Holy Spirit, touching every heart. The only way a heart will repent is that they have, must be touched by the Spirit of God. Now, Father, begin to touch our hearts. Move by your Holy Spirit. Bring us to a place to see ourselves for ourselves. We fail to see ourselves. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us. But all our failures, all our shortcomings, all our disobedience, knowing that you still love us and have always taken care of us. Bring us to a place of repentance, a place of turning, that our hearts be touched and turned 
unto you. You know where every person is right now in this hour. You know, Lord, those who love you. You know those who are confused. You know those who don't understand. But you have given us one spirit that I wish to move, the Holy Spirit, that can touch every heart. Touch hearts to bring us to the place of repentance, a place of turning, a true desire to become sons and daughters of God. Truly a desire to enter and become a part of the kingdom of God. To be in obedience to your word, to learn and to know who you are. That we may be able to be obedient. Help us to be taught by leaders with wisdom and understanding and a true anointing that will give us a true word to listen to, to understand, and to accept, that we may be able to follow after you line up on line and precept upon precept, that we may come into our place of destiny with you, that we can fulfill our purpose in our lives and in the kingdom of God. We thank you for touching even now those that are under the sound of a voice. Anyone under the sound of my voice, Father, I pray that you touch their hearts. Move them toward the place of repentance as only you can do. And I thank you for touching right now. I thank you for walking through walls that we built around ourselves, around our hearts. I thank you for touching right now in the name of Jesus. And we call it, Lord, that it is so, that it is so. And we thank you in Jesus' His mighty name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank God for that awesome word and uh, teaching, Sister Dolores. It's, it is definitely something that um, I pray that the people who are listening can grab a hold to. And as we go through our lives, you know, God is giving us instructions, clear instructions today on how we can combat all of the different issues that we're facing. And you know what, um, what you shared about uh, the death angel, that's really very interesting. Um, I've, I've heard some other people praying uh, about death coming near uh, to people. They never really expounded on it the way that you did. But something that the Lord showed me the other day uh, from the scripture, uh, John 10.10, 10, and we know it says that the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And it's, and um, But Jesus said, but I came. He already came. And uh, one of the things that I notice is so consistent that we're busy asking God to do something that he's already provided for us without recognizing um, that he's already done it. He's already given us that authority, and the Holy Spirit has the power to make anything that is according to God's will come to pass. Just like last night you were talking about how the Holy Spirit, you know, the Spirit of God hovered over the waters, and when God spoke, he began the creation of the earth. In that passage of Scripture, John 10.10, 10, the Lord showed me, he said, the thief, and we know the thief is Satan. He's our enemy. He's our adversary. You know, we have all of these different names for him, but in different points, in different aspects uh, of our walk through this, this life from birth to death, he, is, he comes against us in so many different ways. But as the thief, he came to steal, and he has stolen so much from humanity as a whole. Tricking the woman in the garden, and by as a result of that, stole and usurped Adam's position as the ruler, the rightful ruler of the earth, mankind. And then he actually, um, so he stole that. 
and has been stealing things from us over time even the truth and has blinded in Galatians Paul talks about the fact that the Galatian church had been bewitched they had lost sight of the fact that of what Jesus did on the cross and they started to going back to works again so when he he steals the truth from us well, then the Lord said well okay this is this that was the stealing and the stealing is still going on but he has moved now he had moved into the killing Right now, mm -hmm. he's killing everybody that he can. It's, it's, it's easily, I mean, and some people are going easily without a fight. Some people don't know. and But I'm talking about within the body of Christ right now because if he steals from us, if he steals our ability to operate according to the word for however, which way he goes about it, because we're not diligent. And then he he's killing people off. And if he can kill off the body of Christ, what hope is there for the world? Really, there's, there's, there's no hope for them. But the Lord told me the killing time is upon us, but he said the destruction is coming. And it's going to be devastating what the enemy is going to destroy. And you know when you destroy something, it, it won't rise up again. That's coming, and that's one of the things. Now, we can, we can put a stop to a lot of the killing right now, today, in real time. And this is what this, this whole series of praying is all about. It's about stopping the enemy in his tracks, not allowing him to move any further. But the next phase is the destruction, and it is coming. But if we don't get a handle on the killing... How can we possibly withstand him during the time of destruction? And I was just sharing this. Uh, I shared this with two other people over the last several days, uh, this revelation that the Lord had given me. Um, I think it was Friday or Saturday when I got it, and I shared it with somebody on Saturday night. It was the first time that I shared it with someone. And to hear you talking about the you know, the death angel coming to, you know, to kill. And I was like, yeah, okay, Lord. You, and, you know, that was just a confirmation for me. But the enemy means business. And we have to do our part. We have to really roll up our sleeves and get busy about God's business and uh, get a handle on this situation. What do you think? You want to uh, expound a little bit more on that, um, what you said the Lord gave you? Yes, when the Spirit of God showed me that death had come upon the earth, and I saw the rings around it, uh, what he showed me uh, was a vision. And I saw mm -hmm. the, like the figure of the front face of God facing toward the earth. And there were rings around it, like a blue, yellow, and green ring going around the earth. And the figure as something walking around the entirety of the globe. When he said death has come upon the earth and it's walking the entirety of it. And he began to gave he gave me three words. He said if we would pray, if we would get in the word, learn the word, and if we would believe. He said he gave me the scripture from the Old Testament. And he told me to go uh, look up the word chaffed. And I said, chaffed. So I went and I looked it up. And it was, you know, like something has dried up and there's only particles left of it, just particles mm -hmm. left. And he said, if we would do those three things, if we would pray, believe, and get in the word, that he would blow up on the earth and dried up like chat. And I saw okay. these particles blowing away from the earth as the okay. breath of God blew up, blew up on it. And so uh, when we come to a place of repentance, and that seems to be the stressing word that the Spirit of God just did not that we repent. You know, when your children do things wrong, you just want them to come into correction. 
and not go right. in the direction again, uh, uh, again. And so that's God's biggest issue. It's just what you were sharing earlier, that we may say we repent, but then we soon return to our old ways and forget what we repented of. And so God just desires right. true repentance in this hour. He just desires true repentance. The love for us is already there. The miracles are there. The blessings are there. Everything has been provided for us, just as you were saying, in the Word. Everything has been already done. It's just us coming into alignment with the will of God. That's all he desires, is that we come in alignment with the will of God. Okay. And do we... um do we have any, I mean, you know, just for the people who are, you know, just not familiar with how the Spirit of God works, how would you suggest that we do that? Come into alignment with the will of God? Yes. God's word, God's word is his will. And the uh, situation you were sharing about um, leaders that are not really teaching us the word it's, mm -hmm. it's wonderful to have, you know, uh, dance teams and praise teams and all the auxiliaries and organizations and all that. But the foundation is the word. If if someone will teach you, it's like having your little children. If you would teach your child the foundation, the ground floor of how to do something, they'll never forget it. I was sharing with my daughter this morning, and I said to them, to her, I said, do you remember what prayer you prayed every day before you went to school when you were a little girl? I had two of them. She said, Psalm 91, and I still prayed, Mama. I still pray. I prayed it this morning. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and so when we begin to get the foundation, start at the beginning. If you don't know where to start, start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Start where the word says to, to the confession of believing and accepting him truly as our personal savior. Start there and move forward. As, and the, the, the other most important thing is to ask God for a teacher, a true leader that will truly teach you the word. Preaching is wonderful. But Jesus was a teacher. He always taught. Right. Because that is how we learn. We learn by being taught. That's why our children go to school, to be taught. And so God desires that we start in the word of God, being taught how to believe, what faith is, what belief is. Because when you first get saved, God is doing so many mind-blowing things until you're like, oh, wow, this is what it's like? You know, this is wonderful. <laughs> oh, I love being saved. <laughs> oh, wow. Everything I ask God for, he just does it. You know, we have 100 right. testimonies. We can't, we can't have service because we've got so many testimonies. Well, return to that. Childlike faith. Hebrews 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And so you may not see it, but if you have the faith to believe it, to believe is just to have a mental perception. I was saying, get it in your mind. Because when something gets into your mind, you hear people say, oh, it's hard to change their mind. Mm -hmm. Because that, that thing has become grafted into your mind. It's going into you in your subconscious. And so the word of God becomes engrafted into us, a belief system. And everybody has a belief system, right or wrong. Right. But the Holy exactly. Spirit desires the Holy Spirit desires that we believe the Word of God. And the only way we can learn how to believe 
what to believe is that we have anointed teachers. Pray for an anointed teacher to teach you the word. And that's how you begin. Amen. 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 That's right. Okay. Well, that is definitely, <laughs> that's definitely uh, dead on. And we do, I know that in today's time, so some of the things that we've been praying for um, as far as the body of Christ, and I want to, um, Last night, uh, Sister Camille gave, uh, you know, I that was a good revelation that she gave about um, the children. And um, I'm going to add that anointed teachers, you know, people who are anointed, because there are a lot of people that are capable of teaching. And one of the things that I know for sure is that when we have walked, and this is what the Lord has told me, in reference to how I teach the way I teach is because the Lord told me when you walk through something, when you know it's true and you've gotten a victory over, you can teach it and there is an anointing that comes along with that. And it's a lot of people that are just opening the Bible and just reading and they're reading commentaries and they're, you know, reading um uh, worldly dictionaries for their definitions. And I said, well, what does the Bible actually say about that? You know, did you just open the, open it and start reading? Or, ha I mean, honestly, have you sought the Holy Spirit for a revelation about that subject? Have you actually gone through this yourself? There are some things I can't talk to anybody about. I mean, I can tell you what the Bible says about marriage, but I've never been married, so I can't really speak about what it's like to be married and to be a woman who, you know, a godly woman, and whether you have an ungodly husband or a godly husband, I can't speak to that. I can tell you only what the Bible says. That's as far as I can go. And whatever the Holy Spirit may lead me to say, but as far as having to actually walk through that day and night for years or decades, I can't. I can't do that. And one of the things that we have is we have a lot of people that are teaching. And I've heard teaching... It has no power. And, the, mm -hmm. you know, the keynote scripture for this ministry is um, found in 2 Corinthians 4 and 20, when Paul says that, you know, the kingdom of God is not enticing words of men's wisdom, but a demonstration of power. So if you don't have any power in your life, then I'm questioning what kingdom are you working for? What kingdom are you promoting? <laughs> Because the Holy Spirit definitely will back up God's word. He will definitely back up God's word, which is exactly what he did in the original, uh, before the original church in the book of Acts. And I'm just going to add that right now because I don't want to forget anointed teachers. So that tomorrow when we're praying again, we will have that as part of our things that we want to be praying for that God would re really raise up those people. Thank you so much for um, sharing that with us. Um, and for all of those, uh, all of you who are listening today, you know, we want to thank God for uh, Sister Dolores. Did you have any closing remarks before we pray and close out this session? Absolutely awesome time. Uh, let us go before the Lord in prayer. Go ahead. You may close, close out, out sister. Father, we thank you, you for the word that you have spoken. We thank you, Father God, for the word that you have sent to us. We pray that we have listening ears, that we have tender hearts to hear and receive what you, the instruction that you have given us. And we praise you. We give you honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for our leaders. We thank you for this great woman of God that you've given this assignment to, to call us to prayer in this hour. And we thank you for all those that are listening, that every heart is touched and every soul is blessed. And we thank you right now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And thank you all for joining us. 
Uh, we invite you to uh, send any prayer requests you have to soulramaministries at gmail.com. You can visit us on our Facebook page, Soul Rama's Kingdom Authority, or the Believer's Household of Faith. And please subscribe to this channel. And uh, you may contact us anywhere on social media where you find us. Thank you so much, and God bless you. And we hope to, for you to join us tomorrow, which will be Thursday. So every Monday through Friday at 1030 a.m., we will be on this line. God bless.